What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week we're going to be making some painting supplies. I felt like making a small scene for this week's model and I'm actually painting a room at my house right now. So I thought it would be a lot of fun to recreate some painting objects since I'm doing it in the real world. So let's jump into it. So I'm painting my walls white right now and I was going to choose that color for the paint in this video. But I honestly think it's just a little bit too boring. So I thought we would add some color into our 3D model to spice it up a little bit. So while choosing which color of paint I wanted to go with, I was looking through my models and I realized I don't use the color orange that often. So I thought we would make the paint a bright orange. I feel like this week's model is also really great for beginners or any artist that's new to Maya since all of these objects are fairly straightforward. If you take a closer look, almost every object in the scene is either a rectangle or a cylinder. So I'm hoping it will be a great video for people to follow along who are fairly new to 3D modeling. Don't forget, this whole video will be available in real time, along with all the working files, and you can find it all on my Patreon page, which will be linked in the description below. It's also the best way to support my work, so if you like these types of videos and you want to help support my art, please consider checking it out. I'm also starting to post more tutorial-based tips and tricks videos on there, so if you want access to other types of content, you can find it all on my Patreon page. So like any 3D model, the blockout stage is very important. So we're going to take our time and slowly block out those main shapes in our scene. I love making these types of small scenes and I'm not going to lie, I wish I had more time to add more objects like painting tools, more paint cans, and other random small objects. But I just ran out of time, so if you're going to recreate your own painting scene, I suggest filling it in with more random stuff. I find the more you add, the more interesting it is to look at. I always have a hard time deciding when to stop adding things to the scene and this was definitely one of those models. So what I decided to do was start with the largest object in the scene. And to be honest, I do this with all my models. I find it's just easier to visualize how everything is coming together. And it also helps me figure out my proportions. If I can get that largest object out of the way, it's easier for me to figure out what the other objects, the smaller ones look like and how big they should be. So in this scene, the largest object was the ladder. So we're gonna start adding in some rectangles and start blocking out all those wooden pieces. And then we can start adding smaller objects to it afterwards and start filling it in a little bit more to bring it to life. For my ladder, I found an image on Google to use as a reference, and I like the idea of a small ladder. I thought it would just fit better into my scene, so I decided to use this photo as my ladder reference. As always, we'll go over a few things I would do differently if I were to recreate it later on in the video when we go over the UVs. Now I'm not sure if you've seen it already, but in the past I already did create a painting model, the unfinished canvas, which if you haven't seen you should probably check it out on my YouTube channel. But I was very tempted to add lots of colors of paint all over my models to make it look more messy and used, but I didn't want it to look like my other painting scene that I already created. I wanted to do something a little bit different, so rather than painting a canvas and having drops of paint everywhere, we're going to be painting some walls, and I decided to hold off a bit on the used messy look. Which looking back now, I kind of wish I made it look a little bit more messy. I feel like adding more colors and drops and smudges of paint all over the place would have made it more fun and a bit more interesting to look at. We'll talk about this more later on in the video, but for now, we need to model our painting objects. So you may already be able to tell, but I'm just gonna work on one side of my ladder. Since basically both sides are the exact same, it's gonna save me a lot of time to model only half of the objects, and then I can simply just duplicate them to the other side once I'm finished. So I'm only gonna work on one hinge, one leg, and really only focus on one side of this ladder. Once everything is looking pretty good, we can go ahead and just duplicate them over. So let's continue blocking out some shapes and we can start piecing together our painting scene.
All right, so here are the painting supplies in its finished form. Now everything you saw in the video is basically the exact same, but there is one tiny detail I decided to add last minute before we started the texturing. And that is these two small pieces of tape on this piece of wood. Now the main reason why I decided to add this, well, there's lots of objects I wanted to add and we'll go over that in a second. But I noticed at the very end, I was really focused on this angle or this side of my ladder and my scene for some reason. And I noticed how this side just looked a little bit plain. I don't know what it was. I thought it just needed something extra and I did run out of time. I didn't have any more time to dedicate to this. So I just wanted to add something really, really quick and simple. So all I did was add a simple plain object, two plain objects for each piece of tape. And I just positioned them as close as I could to this piece of wood. Now tape obviously isn't perfectly straight. So I made sure to just angle some of these like this one down here is a little bit curved on this edge and I curled up the bottom of this piece of tape. This bottom one, I just bent it around the edge here. So it looked like you kind of slapped on the piece of tape quickly while you're taping up the room, prepping it for painting. Now I could have added more pieces of tape, but I thought just adding some color since my tape is going to be green, I could add some green on this piece of wood and it would just make it hopefully a little bit more interesting to look at. Now that being said, there's lots I feel like we could have added to the scene. And if I could go back, this is definitely a model I wish I could have add more, dedicated more time to. Now a few of the objects that I think would fit really well in this is just adding firstly some more paint cans. So these ones are the same size and the same color, but adding maybe different sizes like a smaller paint can, maybe stacking some with different labels or different colors would really help bring the scene to life a little bit more. Not only that, you could add maybe a screwdriver. I really wanted to add a screwdriver up here with an outlet cover. You know those outlets you see in the rooms that you usually remove before you paint? Well, we can add that little plastic cover maybe on the step with some small screws, or we can add maybe some more pieces of tape or different brush sizes. I really wanted to add a thinner brush and maybe a wider brush, or you can add some extra rolls that were just sitting here prepped that are not covered in paint, just like ready to be used. I don't know, there's lots you can add to the scene to really help bring it to life. So if anybody else is gonna recreate this, I really highly recommend that you do that. I feel like adding a few more objects would go a long way. Now, when it came to the textures, I decided to split this thing up into two different groups for the two different textures applied. Now, one thing also I forgot to mention, as you can clearly see, I decided to duplicate these objects. So this hinge, for example, I duplicated it over to this side. This beveled piece of wood, I just duplicated them all over. So I only really UV'd one side of this ladder just to save time and then duplicated them over. Not only does that save me time, but if you look at my UV editor, a lot of these pieces are actually stacked to save space. Since they're not right beside each other, I didn't think you would really notice any repeating patterns. So the very first group is basically my ladder. Now, like I said, I, do, I stacked a lot of these shells to share the same UV space. So these two front ones are sharing, these two back ones, for example, and these hinges. And it just, like I said, just saved me time while applying materials. Now I did that to these steps as well, but since they're very close together, you would obviously know if there's a paint drop on the top here and it was repeating. So all I did for this top step or the bottom step was just flip it over. That way, the same repeating pattern would be on the bottom and you wouldn't have noticed it. And it's just a little trick you can do to still save space in your UV editor by stacking those shells, but technically they're not gonna look like there's any repeating patterns on them. Now, one other really important thing I made sure I did with this ladder was change the rotation of these UV shells so they're all facing the same direction. And the reason for that is because I'm adding a wood material, there's gonna be a grain effect to it, those lines or those cracks you see in wood. And if some of these shells were vertical, you would notice some lines going the opposite direction, not really the direction that wood goes. A lot of them would be running along it, not vertically or horizontally. Now there's an easy workaround for that. You can just duplicate your material over in Substance, change the rotation of that material and apply to those specific shells that are just you know vertically positioned. But to save time while texturing, you can do small things like make sure your rotations are all the same direction. That way I can add one wood material to it and not have to duplicate and change the rotation of them. So that's one thing I made sure I did. And also I really made sure to take advantage of my UV space. 
I really find if you leave some shells smaller for some reason, you're just wasting resolution in your materials. You can just take advantage of that real estate to have higher resolution and more detail in those materials. So I just really tried to enlarge these as large as I could. That way I took advantage of that space. Now in my second group is basically everything else in the scene. So all my paint cans, the tape, the cloth, and all those other little tiny details. Once again, I made sure to rotate my shells so they're the same direction, and I made sure to straighten the important shells that I need to add labels to. So these two in particular, my paint cans, I wanted to add a label to it. And if these weren't, if they were not straight, it'd be really difficult to achieve that effect. So I made sure to straighten them using that straighten UVs tool under the unfold tab. That way these shells were really nice and straight and it was really easy just to paste on that graphic. Now, originally, if you're following along in the Patreon video, which shows the whole UV mapping process, originally I had these two cans just overlapping, sharing the same space. Since they're the same label, I thought it would make sense just to stack them. Now, while texturing, I noticed how I was really wanting some drips going down this can. That way, because the brush is it's open and I just wanted just, it will be fun, I thought, just to add some paint kind of dripping around. And if they're sharing the same UV space, well, you would see those same drips on this can on the bottom. And this one's closed. It was supposed to be clean. And this one's supposed to be the dirty one that's open. So last minute, I decided to jump back in Maya and just shift one of these shells over a bit so they're not sharing the same space so I can have different materials on each can. So that's the only main difference that I did with these UVs, if you were following along in the video. But other than that, everything else is the same. I decided to take advantage of all that space just to get the most out of those materials, like I said earlier. And everything else is basically the exact same. Now, of course, you have to add a material to each group here. So then in Substance Painter, in my texture set list, you'll see the two materials applied. And other than that, everything else is pretty straightforward. So all we have to do at this point is export this painting items group, and then we can jump over to Substance and we can start our texturing. Don't forget, the whole video in real time will be available on my Patreon page, which you can find in the link in the description below. All right, so now jumping over to Substance Painter, we can start loading in our FBX file from Maya. Now, when it came to the textures, everything was fairly straightforward. I used basically all the built-in materials that come with Substance Painter. So if you're following along, it should be fairly easy to replicate all these materials because they come with the software. But the only main one that I had to create was my label. So for my paint can, I decided to jump on Google Images and find a random label. So I found this spray can, spray paint can on Google Images. And I dragged that into Photoshop to create my own custom label from this. So all I did was change the spray can name to poly render and paint. And I also changed it to say orange since I was planning to have an orange color to my paint. But other than that, everything else was fairly straightforward. Now, one of the materials that I actually didn't know at all how it can approach was the roller on the very bottom. It's like a fuzzy roller look and I didn't really know what material to go with. And what I ended up doing was using some dirt bumpy material. I knew it had to be bumpy and we can fake it. So I made sure the scale was really small and I just changed the color to kind of a light pink like those rollers tend to be. And I feel like we achieved something that looked fairly accurate to how they look in real life. Now, to be honest, if I could go back and spend more time, I would have probably spent more time looking at different ways to achieve that effect. I'm sure there's some maybe in the Substance website in their store that would just, maybe they have a rolling material actually available. I didn't actually take a look, so maybe there is one that would work better. But this mud material that I used for it, I felt like worked pretty good. And everything else was fairly straightforward. I just, like I said, I wanted to add lots of drops and paint and really make this ladder messy. Like there's, I don't know, a painter's ladder. But I did that kind of in my old video that I did of the unfinished canvas. So I decided to make it a bit cleaner and not really completely destroyed with paint and more like it's just a ladder that you use at your house that you just decided to start using to paint with. So I decided to hold back a little bit on the colors that were splattered everywhere. But if I were to go back and recreate it, I feel like it'd be fun just to make it really messy in different colors of paint. Like you've used this ladder many times, painting different rooms with different colors and maybe some smudges or just different little small details of paint on all these objects. Other than that, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. 
Now another small detail that I wish I spent a bit more time on was the paintbrush. I just decided to go with like a leather material. I decided to fake that brush look, but I feel like there's a different material we could have used to make it look more realistic or maybe add a bit more grunge or dirt on the paintbrush and on a few other objects. So there's always more you can add to it. I also wanted to add a label to my stick, the, the mixing stick. I was planning to add a label and for some reason I just forgot to add some print or some name on the top of it that they usually have. So that's one little detail I forgot to add as well. There's always something I feel like you could, you could keep working hours and adding small details and different grunge and specular effects. Once again, I just ran out of time. I had family over this weekend, so I didn't have a lot of time to dedicate to this video, but I'm still really happy with how it turned out. So like we do in every video I post here on YouTube, we're gonna just focus on filling in those empty meshes with some sort of material. Then we can start refining them and start adding more grunge and dirt to them and just slowly build up different material effects afterwards. I find it's much easier filling in those empty meshes with materials and then you can get a better idea of how everything is looking and what needs what. It's really hard to dial in a perfect material right off the bat. And I find it just drags out the process. So let's start filling in these meshes with materials and then we can start refining them and hopefully make it look a little bit more realistic. Once again, if you're interested in seeing this whole texturing process or any part of this video in real time, I will be uploading that video to my Patreon page along with the working files. So if you're interested in opening up the substance file to see how I structured these materials, it will all be available on my Patreon page. All right, so let's just start some texturing.
All right, and that is basically everything. That is the whole 3D modeling, UV mapping, and texturing process that I did to create these painting supplies. I really hope you guys enjoyed this week's video, and if you did, please hit that like button, and also please consider subscribing to the channel. More than half of you are not subscribed, and if you're interested in being notified when my next video comes out, or you just want to help support these videos and my work, please consider subscribing or checking out my Patreon page. Every video I post here on YouTube, I post a real-time version of it on my Patreon page, along with all the working files and the 3D model, so if you want access to any of that, you can find it all on my Patreon page, which will be linked in the description below. And quickly before I go, I just want to give a massive thank you to all my Patreons. I really can't thank you guys enough for your continuous support. It does go an extremely long way in helping support this channel, so I appreciate all of you, and thank you all for the support. All right, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will catch you guys in the next one.